Today we are going to talk about the cell membrane. And to talk about the cell membrane, I think we should start off by talking about fish. And I think you'll understand why in a minute. A fish has a head and a fish has a tail. Just like a fish has a head and a tail, the cell membrane also has a, has a head and a tail. And in a cell membrane, the fishy-like substance is known as a phospholipid. A phospholipid is composed of three basic parts. The head is made up of a charged phosphate group and a glycerol. And the tail is made up of two fatty acids. The phosphate group, the part that looks like a head, is waterproof. It, it, it bonds to water. It likes water. Whereas the fatty acids do not like water. The tail does not like water. Therefore, the heads and the tails stagger to try to avoid the water. It's kind of like a sandwich where the head is made up of the phosphate groups, like the bread, and the tails, or the inside, is made up of the tails, like the fatty acids. It's kind of like a sandwich, and when you put them all together, it kind of looks like this, with the water and the cytoplasm both on the outside. Scientists think that it looks something like this. So just to review, the head of the phospholipid is waterproof, and the tail of the phospholipid is not waterproof and needs to be protected, and that is why we stagger the tails on the inside. The phospholipids form a double layer with heads pointing out and tails pointing in. But how then do things get in and out of the cell? Well, that's a good question. This little green thing here represents a protein, and it's like a channel between the water on the outside of the cell and the cytoplasm on the inside of the cell. The cell membrane lets things in through the protein channel. The cell membrane also helps with messaging through receptors in two ways. There are two types of receptors. The first kind of receptors is kind of like when two people are gossiping about some information. In the same way that two people gossip about some information, there is this thing called a ligand, which is like a juicy piece of gossip that you want to get across to tell someone about. So the ligand travels down the protein channel and ends up inside of the cell. On the inside of the cell, there's something called a receptor. This is kind of like the person that wants to hear the gossip. The ligand comes to the receptor and tells the person that gossip in the same way that someone might tell you a juicy piece of gossip. These are known as intracellular receptors because they come into the cell to tell you the message. On the other hand, there's another kind of message that you can give, and it's similar to the way a cell phone works. For instance, if you wanted to send a message, you would type it into your iPhone, you would, and the, the iPhone would send it to the satellite, and the satellite would then send it back down to the person who you intended the message for. In the same way, if the ligand is too big to fit into the cell, it will attach to the protein channel, and instead of going into the cell, it will transport the message down the protein channel so that the cell knows what to do. So we said that there are two ways that cells help with messaging. The first is the intracellular receptor. That is where the ligand moves into the cell to give the message directly, similar to when someone tells you a piece of gossip. On the other hand, the membrane receptor is when the ligand attaches to the membrane to send the message in the same way that you would send a text message. And that is a brief introduction to how the cell membrane works.